Good day, good day everyone and once again we are back together. Uh, it's been a while since your favorite uncle has been with you. Alright, so uh, today I want us to look at guest laws and of course if you haven't subscribed please just make sure you're part of the family. And of course for those of you that uh, you know are new to the channel, welcome and uh, of course your favorite uncle will always give you good content when it comes to maths and science. All right, so let's have a, a quick look at uh, guess laws. So I'm going to be actually looking at two concepts today uh, in the introduction, right? And I'm going to be looking at uh, ideal guess laws, all right? Or rather ideal guesses versus real guesses, right? So what is the difference between ideal guess and a real guess? And of course, why are we doing this? Because at the end of the day, in order for us to understand guess laws, we need to first model real guesses as ideal guesses, right? Now, the first thing that we know about ideal guesses, right? So an ideal guess would be a guess that essentially doesn't exist, okay? So we try to model uh, real guesses as ideal guesses, right? And in this case, of course, real guesses are the ones that actually exist, okay? Right, so when we look at ideal guesses, we say, well, the molecules occupy no volume, okay? So in this case, when we look at an ideal guess, we say that the molecules occupy no volume, whereas a real guess, it does occupy a significant amount of volume, isn't it? Okay, so we definitely know that it would occupy a volume, right? Uh, it would occupy volume. Uh, in this case, now, what do we mean when we say the molecules occupy no volume, right? What we simply mean is that in this case, suppose that I had a syringe, right? And of course, I've got molecules of a gas there. Of course, the particles of a gas try to fill out uh, the space as much as possible, right? Now, when I push the plunger down, what happens? I put the gas under pressure, right? Uh, let's assume that we've closed the other end, right? So let's say I push it down. Now, you would agree with me. There comes a point that as I push the plunger of the syringe down, right, with the real gas, the plunger wouldn't go any further down. You can try this with the syringe, right? And, you know, uh, try to close the other end and push uh, it down. Of course, there's air inside and there comes a point where you cannot push it any further down. Why is that? Because with the real gas, remember, because the molecules occupy a significant volume, right? What would happen? They would get to a point where they are so closely packed that they can't move any further, right? Whereas with an ideal gas, we can continue pushing this plunger down further and further and further until, you know, that plunger is right at the floor of, you know, that syringe and still there would be a gas there. Why? Because we said the molecules occupy no volume, right? Of course, this doesn't exist in real life, isn't it? Now, how can we get this uh, you know, the, the real guess to occupy, I mean, to behave like an ideal guess. So what we need in order for a real guess to behave like an ideal guess in this instant, right, we need for the volume, you know, to be as big as possible, meaning it needs to be at low pressure, okay? Why at low pressure? In this case, well, it really doesn't matter how big the molecules are. The molecules would be as far away as possible from each other. They would not exert any forces on each other. So in that case, a, a real guess would behave more like an ideal guess at low pressure. Okay, so remember low pressure means that the volume is high, right? So it means that it's a large container, so it would uh, behave more ideally. Right, secondly... We say that there are no intermolecular forces in an ideal guess, no intermolecular forces, intermolecular forces, okay, uh, between molecules, right? 
of course intermolecular forces means between molecules so no intermolecular forces whereas in real gas there are intermolecular forces okay so intermolecular forces are present here um right and why is that significant okay uh, molecular forces are needed to write their forces are present okay so why is this significant in this case it is significant because now think about it if i put a gas at low temperature what happens to that gas it will begin to liquefy right it will liquefy okay so Gases condense at low temperature. Now think about it. That's, that's the same thing that happens, you know, during the process of condensation. That's where we end up having rain, isn't it? Because the molecules, the water molecules in this case, uh, that would have evaporated, uh, they get to a certain point uh, where it is so cold in the atmosphere and they then, you know, just get closer together and they liquefy, they turn into... Uh, uh, droplets, uh, you know, uh, liquid droplets, right? So in this case, we say that with a real gas, it would tend to liquefy, right, at low temperature. So therefore, with an ideal gas, it would not do that. Why? Because there are no intermolecular forces. Remember, gases liquefy because of the intermolecular forces between them, right? So in this case, with an ideal gas, it would not liquefy, right? So it does not liquefy at low temperature, okay? So it does not liquefy. In fact, it does not liquefy ever. And of course, this would not be possible uh, for any real gas, okay? Right, so in this case, what are the other conditions, right, for an ideal gas? Well, we say that the collisions between molecules are said to be elastic all right so it undergoes elastic collisions okay now what are elastic collisions elastic collisions are collisions where no energy is lost okay so no energy is lost uh, during the collision right so no energy is lost okay so which means that uh, the ideal guess would not lose any significant amount of energy, right? Uh, you know, during the molecules colliding. Now, what that would mean is that no matter how much you can put it under pressure in this case, or even if you can increase the temperature, it would not get to a point where, you know, the container, uh, um, you know, either uh, explodes or, you know, uh, you know, talk about explosion. We saw a gas explosion in Johannesburg not too long ago, right? So this would not happen in the case of a, an ideal gas, but with a real gas, definitely you'd find, a, 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 you know, a, a, um, a situation where the gas actually explodes, especially when you put it at high temperature, right? So, in this case, we say that the collisions here are inelastic, okay? So it would undergo inelastic collisions. It means that, you know, there would be some energy that is lost uh, as the molecules collide with one another, okay? So now, how can we get the real gas to behave more ideally under these conditions? Well, what we simply do is we say, look, let's not put it under pressure again. So let us put it under low pressure, okay? So low pressure in this case, uh, definitely this would cause the ideal gas or uh, the real gas to behave more like an ideal gas. And the reason is simple. At low pressure, it simply means that the molecules are as spaced out as possible. Uh, they are far away from each other, you know, um, uh, you know so as, as a result, they do not collide very frequently. Okay, so in this case, those are the conditions or those are the properties of an ideal gas versus those of a real gas. Now, what I want us to look at, you know, are the three laws uh, that govern gases, okay? Right, so we're going to talk about those and then go into uh, some calculations.